This next episode, we decided to take a trip to Bush Gardens before heading to Orlando for our barber battle. I have never been to, much less participated in one. My barber asked me to come out and be his model, so why not? I thought it would be a cool experience. This was the first stop on a seven day Florida trip where we planned to play at least in 12 poker rooms. Unfortunately, we did not win the barber battle, but I had a great time. After a long day, we grabbed some lunch and passed out at the hotel. This hotel was booked with points and was 100% free. When we wake up in the AM, we head to Orange City and attempt to get some revenge. Last time we were here, we punted and we had a very frustrating losing session. This early morning session started around 2.30 AM. We are playing 5-5 no limit, we buy for 1k. Our first hand we pick up a6 of spades in the low jack and open to 15. The cutoff and big blind call. We go three ways to a flop of jack 7-6, two spades. We flop a pair nut flush draw with an overcard. We decide to see bet two thirds and both of our opponents fold. Next hand we look down at ace jack of clubs and a high jack. The low jack limps and we isolate to 30. All of our opponents fold. A few minutes later, we pick up ace four hearts in the small blind. There's a button straddle to 10. We decide to limp with some bad intentions. The player under the gun also limps. The super aggro button makes it 65. This player has been extremely aggressive. He's the reason why we move seats. He has about 800 behind. We have an extremely tight image and seeing how he is the most aggressive player at the table, his range is definitely wide in this spot. We decide to go ahead and put in a good old limp re-raise. We make it 260. Everyone folds. Our sizing is similar to what we would make it if he opened to 65 on the button and we were in the small blind. We typically raise four to five times. The raise size, that's my standard three bet sizing when out of position. This next hand, we are about one key effective. We pick up seven six spades in the low jack. There's an under the gun straddle. The middle position opponent limps. With our extremely tight image, we elect to raise to 60. It folds to the middle position who calls. This is the same opponent we limp re raised against in the previous hand. The flop comes out against jack four with one heart. We decide to see bet 80 into 130. Our opponent calls. The turn is a 10 of hearts. This brings in a gut shot straight to Broadway and a backdoor flush draw. We both check. The river is the jack of hearts. Our opponent quickly checks. This quick check tells me he most likely has a one pair hand, possibly a two pair hand that he's looking to show down. This is a great run out for our range. We definitely could have a hand like ace, king, king, queen, or kings, which we would check back on the turn at a very high frequency. A portion of flush draws we pick up on a turn, we would also check back. We decide to go for it. We put out a bet of 260 to represent a straight or a backdoor flush. I would prefer to have at least one heart, but with our image, I think we get a lot of folds. He tanks for a while, almost two minutes. Finally, our opponent decides to lay it down. We get one through and we show the bluff. This is not something I typically do, but we want to get played back at when we actually have value. Less than five minutes later, we pick up Ace King in the same configuration in the small blind. There's a button straddle. This is the same opponent as from before. We decide on an aggressive limp. We anticipate the button to make a raise again. This is the same opponent from before who we are kind of picking on. If he doesn't raise, we do not mind playing this hand out of position. Our hand strength would be very disguised. The middle position player limps and the low jack limps. The button just cannot resist and does exactly what we anticipate and bumps it up to 85. The button has about 800 behind. We weigh our options and think about raising four to five times his raise, which would be about half the stack. This would be awkward as we would be all in on those flops because the pot would be at least 850 and we would only have 425 behind. This leaves a very low stack to pot ratio of about 0 0.5. His range is just too wide for us just to call out of position. After thinking over our options, all you can eat is the decision we land on. We do this for a few reasons. One, it's a straddle pot. It's only going to be 85 big blinds instead of 170. Two, the table dynamics. We just bluffed this guy and showed a few minutes earlier and we also limp re raised him earlier as well. He just might make a revenge tilt call. Three, it's also great for my image if he folds out as we have not had to show down a single hand. Our opponent goes into the tank and eventually folds. We don't get involved in much for about half an hour until this next hand. 
We are seven handed on the button with a couple of ladies. The entire table limps to us. We decide to raise to 50. The small blind folds and the big blind three bets us to $200. He covers us. We have about 1.3K. We go ahead and make the call. I think four betting is definitely an option, but being this deep, I feel we will hate our hand if we four bet to say around 500 and then get six bet jammed on. This would make us absolutely sick to our stomach. So after some thought, we decide that we are just going to call. If our opponent is structuring correctly, his three bet range will consist of a lot of hands that we beat, like hands eights through jacks, uh, small suited connectors, Broadway suited connectors, and eights X suited hands. If he thinks we're trying to steal with a wide range on the button, he may even have an even wider range. We also have to take into consideration that we've been very aggressive the last few hands, showing a bluff and shoving all in pre-flop. This particular opponent has not got a line, but seemed capable of making plays. For all these reasons, we land on a call and take it to the streets. The pot's about 420. The flop comes ace, five deuce with one club. Our opponent down bets to 125. This sizing is less than one third. We are definitely not folding to this small sizing. This could be a 100% range bet. So we decide to go ahead and peel one and we see a deuce of spades. Our opponent now slows down and checks. We think about checking back, but we instead decide to bet 150 into 645. This is for value with the intention of folding to a jam. I'm honestly not sure if this is the correct play. I feel like this bet accomplishes a few things. It freezes our opponent as it looks like we're betting for value with an ace. We get more value from worse pairs as they may hero call us. I also feel we avoid being put in a miserable spot on the river as our opponent may sense weakness and blast off. If hero called on turn, our opponent will most likely check and we can make the decision there to either check back or go for value. It doesn't come to this as our opponent just tank folds. Let me know in the comments what you guys would have done in this spot. 15 minutes later, we pick up Jack in the offsuit in the small blind. The hijack limps, the cutoff opens to 15. He has about 800 behind. We recognize that due to his 3x size raising over a limp, this is likely not a strong hand. We decide to go ahead and three bet to 85. The hijack folds and the cutoff defends. Flop comes king, queen, five. We flop an open it straight draw and we decide to see bet $70. Our plan is to bet big on the turn of call. Instead, our opponent reluctantly folds. The very next hand is played against the same exact opponent. We look down at pocket kings on the button. Our opponent in the hijack straddles for 10. We decide to raise to 30. The low jack calls. When it gets back around to the hijack, again, this is the same opponent who made the strange raise prior, he now makes another strange raise to 60. We think for a moment and we decide to go big. We four bet to 300. We do this for value and also to make our hand seem a little more bluffy. We could sense that our opponent was getting annoyed with us. He didn't take much time and he calls. The pot is about 660 now. The flop comes out jack nine six. Our opponent decides to make about a half pot bet into us for 325. We immediately move all in and he snap calls. We embrace the variance and scoop about a 1.7k pot. Our opponent does not show. Immediately after a few players pick up and we're down to three handed, so we decide to call it quits. We rack up, head back to the hotel and get a workout in. I'm happy we're able to come back and redeem ourselves from our last session where we punted. We were in for 1200 and cashed out 2470. That's a profit of $1,270. After breakfast, we fill up our tank and make the 110 mile drive to Club 52 in Melbourne, Florida. I'm not going to get into in-depth hand analysis these next few hands. We played two very short sessions, one at Club 52 and the other one at the Port St. Lucie Card Club. Jumping right back into the action, we pick up pocket rockets on the button. We raise to $21 over a few limps, and unfortunately we get no action and everyone folds. A few hands later, we pick up ace queen offsuit. We end up raising and we go three ways, but we check fold after missing on a 10-5-7 board. 
A few hands later, we look down at Ace-King offsuit. We get it all in, and we unfortunately end up chopping against the same exact hand. We play a bomb pot where everyone puts out $10 before the dealer puts out two flops. We are on the button with 9-7 off. We end up winning half the pot with a pair of nines on the bottom board. Next hand we get involved in, we end up three betting an opponent who opens for middle position with pocket jacks and our opponent folds. Next hand we play another bomb pot, this time with ace eight offsuit. We flop top pair on both boards and somehow end up scooping and winning a decent sized pot. We end up winning one more small pot after flopping two pair out of the small blind with ace six of spades. After this hand, we end up racking up and heading over to the cage. We were in for 200 and out for 428. That's a profit of $228. We only played about a 30 minute session as we had to jump back on the road and head to Port St. Lucie and check into our hotel. One of my friends who's new to poker and to dealing just got a job here not too long ago. They asked me to stop in and check it out. The next morning we take the five minute drive and we arrive to the Port St. Lucie Car Club about five minutes before they open at 10 a.m. This is actually my first time playing here. After saying hello to my friend, we immediately get seated, head over to the cage and we buy in for the max. The only game running at this time was a one to no limit game where the maximum buy in was $200. First hand, the button straddles, we are the big blind with King Jack and open the 15. The button calls, we go heads up. The flop comes queen 10, three rainbow. We see bet 20 and our opponent folds. The next hand we look down at king seven of diamonds on the button, the entire table limps. We decide to isolate to 25 and the entire table folds. The next hand we look down at 10, eight of diamonds and the cutoff. It's a limp pot. We are going to see a flop six ways. The flop comes out jack seven, three, all diamonds. We flop a flush and a gut shot straight flush draw. The older gentleman in the big line leads out for half pot. We decide to call. The player on the button elects to raise to $25. This player had not played a single hand up until this point. The older gentleman in the big line decides to call. When it gets back around to us, we make a terrible, terrible laydown. At the time, my thought was that the older gentleman leading into the whole field was extremely strong. And then the player who had not played a single hand to our left raising was also very strong. So I gave each opponent way too much credit. This ended up being the incorrect fold as the big blind had ace jack with the ace of diamonds and the button had king eight with the king of diamonds. We play one more hand before racking up. We win a small pot with ace three of hearts. We flopped top pair in a single raised pot and get one street of value. We were only in for 200 and we cashed out 236 for a profit of $36. After these three sessions, we are currently up $1,533 through 3.5 hours. For our 1K to 100K update, we have played about 402 hours and we are currently up $22,927. Three rooms down and nine more to go. Next time I see you guys, we'll be in West Palm Beach Thank you for watching. Remember to embrace the variance in life and in poker.